So the more I think about this book report challenge, you know, where I'm rewarding, you know, it was a hundred dollars in February and now because I didn't get any winners, uh, I upped it to 200 in March. You know, I, I'm starting to realize that, you know, while that's a great, great thing, and I really do think it will help parents and kids talk about money and investing and, you know, sacrifice and living for you, living below your means and retiring early and, you know, all these good conversations that I never really had, which is awesome, but it's very sort of one on one. I've now thought about it. And again, as I said yesterday in a Facebook live, this this came to me um while working out and, and almost passing out, I was working out so hard. And this is, you know, why don't you, you know, take a shot at trying to get in front of colleges or high school students and, you know, see if you can't start right at that age. Cause I know it's right around 15, maybe 16. I would have been able to receive this message. Now I know not every teenager or young adult will receive this message and that's fine. Right. But if I can impact 5% of the room, and get them to understand some concepts, uh, I think it would be pretty cool. So what I wanted to do here is just take a, a real run through a, a possible topic list for high school and college uh, teachers and professors and, and ask you, if you know any high school teachers or professors, um, you know, forward them this link because, you know, I think, you know, I think if we can get in front of them and talk about financial independence and retiring early and living below our means and, you know, all of that good stuff that we now know as 30, 40, 50 year olds, we might be able to save a generation from going into college, credit card debt in college and, you know, doing all these free this and free that's that really aren't free as we know. So, um, you know, if you can help me forward this on, I don't really know uh, many teachers and professors. Um, I'm happy to do stuff online. If you, you know, frankly, if you run a, a group that wants to do a video cast or anything that could, that could impact, you know, dozens if not hundreds of young adults you know let's have a conversation let's you know i'm 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 in a position where i can give my time away so um you know if you have something that's interesting you want to do it online or a podcast or uh, a webinar or whatever it is you know let's 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 try to set something up so this is what i'm thinking um you know, so I'm really trying to see how to get in front of young adults, you know, highlight financial freedom or we, we can name it whatever you want. Right. As the professor or teacher inviting me in, we could tailor the message to whatever you think is important. But it's, it's got to be something catchy that kind of, you know, smacks them and makes them put down their phone and, you know, really gets their attention. Some things I think that are interesting is, is maybe just introducing the concept of active income and passive income. And we again, call it whatever you like, but basically it's high taxed and low taxed income. Uh, there's always the concept of good debt and bad debt. Uh, we could talk about that. And then again, if we could throw out a target again, just to shock them, you know, like how many of your parents are, you know, 40 and above and, you know, probably most of them will raise their hand. Well, what would you like to do if you were, you know, financially independent, didn't need a job at 40? You know, how cool would that be? Right? Something like that. Again, just shocking. Uh, obviously, a lot of this will be based on my experience. Uh, again, the experience I write about one rental at a time. It's something that took me 15 years to do. Uh, I truly believe if I would have started at 18, I could have been done by 30 uh, just because I would have been able to keep my expenses lower, which is the key to getting to people early, right? If you get to them early before they sign up for those big car payments, those big house payments, you know, all that other stuff, um, you can really get them focused on a great job or income and then do the side hustle of real estate and, and be done by 30 if you start at 18 and maybe by 35 or 40. So um, you know, this, this story documents the four phases I went through. It talks about all the things you, you know, core beliefs, the mistakes made. And again, it's a book that, you know, anyone should pick up and read. It's about a three hour read people, um, you know, according to Amazon, uh, are having, you know, are, are enjoying it, which means the world to me. Um, but again, when I, when I go to, you know, in front of high school or college kids, I will be speaking from a place of been there, done that, not just theory. Uh, so, uh, that should, that should mean something, right? Uh, to the kids. So some money myths, uh, you know, high income is the goal. Uh, I call that playing good offense, right? Just because you have a high income and I've known many people to make seven figures a year and basically be broke. Uh, it's not about income people. It's, it's about, uh, it's about something else. You know, the whole idea that you have to work 40 years and save 10% of your money and, you know, just hope and pray things work out is the only way to retire comfortably is a myth, uh, both on lots of fronts. A, I don't think it should take 40 years. Uh, if you want to work for 40 years, you know, wouldn't it be great if it's a choice, not because you have to, 
and then contributing to a 401k is also great, especially if you get company matches. I'm just here and I tell you it's not the only way, right? Maybe you can do the 401k and something else. So, um, you know, so it's, it's there's just some myths. Invest, investing is risky. It it can be, right? Obviously, anytime you chase the crowds, you you chase you chase something that's hot. You know, whether it be tulips, you know, way back when, or crypto, you know, a year or two ago. Yeah, if you get if you get in front or um, you know, you you join the wave, you're gonna get crushed, and um, you know, it can happen. And then the other one is just saving, right? Just being, you know, the sort of depression era mentality of, you know, just save, 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 save. Uh, you can't really do that, especially in a world of fiat currency where, you know, there's inflation and, you know, cash is trash and, you know, all of that stuff. So um, there are other. So just real quick, again, the, this is all just first draft. I wrote, wrote this early in the morning, uh, again, trying to show uh, teachers and professors what we could talk about. And, and if you invite me in front of your class or your school, we'll, we'll work on this together. But again, so this is just what I'm thinking. So active income, right? That's a W-2, right? That's the highest taxed, you know, you could lose if you're in a high income bracket more than, uh, you actually should be, uh, you can lose greater than 50% of your income. Likely take 40 years to retire and stressful and you know, have jobs you don't hate and bosses you hate and all that stuff. Uh, this is what 99% of the people do. Uh, 99% of the people think um, I got to get a job, you know, do this, do that, and just be a, a wage slave or, um, you know, work, 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 work. So, you know, passive income, uh, it can be tax free. You do it once and you receive repeatedly. Uh, it can take 10 to 15 years to put together the passive income streams to, um, you know, to retire freely. And then only 1% of the people uh, focus on this. Bad debt, good debt. You know, again, this is for the kids, right? So credit cards, you know, let's really warn them about that. Watch out. You know, I remember when I was on campus, them giving away free pizzas and, you know, other stuff. Uh, and that's, um, you know, lots of people signed up. There were lines, you know, for their free T-shirts and all that stuff. It's crazy. Uh, you know, you you enjoy it once, whatever you buy, but you pay for it, you know, for months, if not years. Uh, it steals future money. That's basically what credit cards are doing is like you could have it today, but I'm going to take a little bit from you for the next, you know, two years, three years, five years, whatever. And again, when you really do the math, you know, something you purchase for 100 can end up costing you 500, to, you know, if you're paying the minimum and stuff like that. It's just it's just a bad idea. Good debt, right, helps you make money. Uh, you know, the asset that you're buying is paid off by others. It's tax deductible. Uh, it creates ownership. And then ownership gives you the ability to uh, have the appreciation. You know, if you want to be done by 40, uh, you know, you got to live below your means. Don't don't jump on all the free credit cards. Again, we, we angle this message towards the kids. You earn, save, invest, repeat. It is really that simple, right? So I'm not here telling kids not to go to school, not to get a job, you know, all of that stuff. No, you got to go earn some money, right? The more money you earn and you save, uh, the more you have to invest and you'll keep going. And, and that's how you get done by 30, 35, 40. It's because you earn, save, invest, and repeat. You know, you have to focus on your day job, right? So I'm not like some people that say, if, you know, college is a waste or college is this or that. That's not me. I'm I'm saying you need to be very, very good at your day job. Go get a job that pays you. Have, you know, maybe even a sales job so you have unlimited upside. And then you have a side hustle. And that side hustle that I recommend, obviously, based on my book and my experience and how we did it, is buy and hold rental properties. Uh, the ability to have low stress uh, process doing that is uh, spectacular. And then when your passive income exceeds your monthly income, you're financially free. Uh, if you ever get a chance to pay Rich Dad Poor Dad's cash flow game, the board game, uh, do it because this is all that game teaches. It's a little tedious because you have income and balance sheets and all of that, but frankly, that's part of the part of the learning experience is just understanding how all this stuff ripples through income statements and cash flow uh, and balance sheets and the like. So, in the end, uh, if you're a teacher and a professor, you can always check me out. You know, this is only one video. Uh, you can check me out in lots of different ways. On my YouTube channel called, again, One Rental at a Time, you'll see four different themes. Uh, one of the things I'm passionate about is interviewing people in the real estate business. So we do interviews. Uh, we do what we call subscriber questions, which are always fun. Uh, we do something I call real talk, which is, you know, something bugs me. I go on a three to five minute walk and just ramble. Uh, and then uh, you'll see me walk through properties in all different stages from total slumlord to mid project to, to nearly done. Uh, I do have a new Twitter handle. I retired the one I uh, had for 15 years as a software guy, uh, and this one's just ramping up. It's uh, one rental at a time, uh, spelled a little differently than uh, 
everything else just because there's a character limit. So again, one rental at sign a time. And then finally, do me a favor and uh, buy the book if you want to really check me out because it is our 15-year journey documented. It is my core beliefs and how to get started and all of that. Um, and again, when you do that, uh, something I do is I ask people to send selfies with the book. You know, your smiling face holding the book is great. I'd love to read that um, or receive that. And then, of course, uh, a five-star review would be wonderful. I'm a self-published guy, uh, no no publisher pushing anything. So uh, any additional reviews, uh, five-star reviews would be wildly helpful and uh, greatly appreciated. All right, so again, this is just something I wanted to do, sort of paint a picture for you on what could be possible in front of a, a group of students. And uh, again, this uh, this is something that could be very helpful.